Now that we know the base architecture, let's go ahead and create our first agent. Creating an agent is easy to do from the Copilot Studio web interface, but you do need to prepare a few things in advance to make this experience even faster. A few things you need to prepare before creating your agent are your agent name and the agent icon. And I highly recommend that you work with your marketing and communications department. This way, you make sure that they are pretty. Of course, you need to also provide an agent description so people know what they are using. So far, so easy. But after that, we have the agent instructions and the agent knowledge, which are a bit more advanced. So let's dive deeper into them. First, let's talk about agent instructions. This is where you tell the agent what its role is, what it should do, how should it answer back. Should it be funny or should it be serious? If we break it down, there are a few things you need to make sure that your instructions cover. First of all, the purpose. Make sure that you clearly define the role and the area of expertise of the agent, including the primary functions that it serves. Next up, the guidelines define how the agent should communicate. An agent might be concise, detail, interactive, or suggestive. After that, tell the agent the main tasks that this agent is expected to perform. This can include generating suggestions, automating tasks, providing explanations, or guiding a user through a process. Finally, another one that would be important is non-standard terms that the agent might not understand, such as any unique acronyms that only your organization uses. Instructions have a limit of 8,000 characters, and while that might seem like a lot, I have seen companies use it all. You can also use Markdown to emphasize or organize your instructions. Markdown is a markup language that allows you to format plain text documents with special characters. Let's take a look at an example and let's start with the purpose. We can tell our agent, you are an HR onboarding assistant designed to help new employees transition smoothly into their roles. Your goal is to provide essential onboarding information, guide employees through setup steps, answer common HR-related questions, and escalate complex issues when necessary. You should be friendly, professional, and efficient in all interactions. Now let's talk guidelines. The formatting such as the hashtag are marked down, but they are not mandatory. As you can see on the example on the screen, I tell my agent what tone to use, what to do, and what not to do. For example, do not provide confidential or personal employee information. Next up, let's talk about the skills, which are the main tasks that an agent is expected to perform. In this case, I tell the agent that it should retrieve and summarize HR policies. It should guide employees through IT setup like email, Teams, VPN, multi-factor authentication, and so on. I really tell my agent what are the tasks that it will have to do when my users interact with it. Finally, I'm sharing some non-standard terms that my users or my documentation might use, such as learning engagement unit, or that PS means plural site, or that Excalibur is the name of our intranet. Imagine if we never told our agent that Excalibur is the name of our intranet and somebody asked for a link to it, the agent would have no idea what they're talking about. Now let's talk knowledge. What knowledge should this agent have? Should it have general AI knowledge? And this is the public knowledge of the large language model that it was trained on. Should this agent access any public websites, any specific SharePoint sites, Dataverse tables, or you can simply even upload specific documents with knowledge for this agent. Now let's go ahead and create our agent. So let me go to create over here. Let's go on new agent. And first thing I want to talk about is, you see by default, the primary language here is in English. 
If you want to edit it, you have to do it right now because once created, you cannot change the language of your agent. So let's start giving it the name. So my name of my agent is Globomantics HR Onboarding Agent. You don't need to add agent to the name. The best thing would be to work with your IT department and figure out what governance you want to put in place on naming, icons, and things like that. This way, all the agents that your company creates follow the same pattern. So it's really important you work with IT as well as communications to pick the right icon, name, and things like that. This way, every agent you create makes sense for your users. Now, let me add a description here. This is the Globomantics HR agent that helps new hires with questions about Globomantics and then my instructions. Now, I will copy this. It's what I showed you in the slides a bit earlier. And if ever you want to try it as well, I'll give you all the instructions that you can download as part of the exercise files. So let me put those in. There we go. You see you're an HR onboarding assistant for Globomantics and really everything that we have covered in the slides. Something that I want you to notice, you see here, I use markdown for headings, things like that. And here it's in plain text. However, after we create the agent, you will see that it understands it and formats it right. But just remember here, we use markdown and I'll show you the result after in just a few seconds. After that, we need to add the knowledge. At creation, you don't actually have all the different options. You can add a public website, you can add one or more SharePoint sites, and if we go in advanced, you see we cannot add those yet. So you cannot add anything if you don't want to, if the option you want isn't there. But for me, I want to pick SharePoint. And I have my intranet here called Excalibur. Let me copy the URL of this SharePoint site here, and let's click on add. Great, it added the link, the name, the description. I can, of course, optimize those. So if I go back to it or somebody else goes edit it, they understand exactly what each knowledge source should be. Great, I clicked on add here. You see I have the Excalibur site. Everything looks good, so let's go ahead and click on create. Now, it should only take anywhere from 10 seconds to one minute. And wow, in this case, it only took uh, less than a minute to create it. It's still loading here, but there you go. What I wanted to show you in the instructions, that markdown is now formatted. So you see, it looks pretty. So that is a big advantage of using markdown in your instructions. When you consume it after in the user interface, it will be a lot easier to consume. Let's do a quick test. If it works, we haven't optimized anything yet, right? We just gave it instructions and we told it where to look. Let me type here a question for my agent. Let's ask, what is the expense policy for Globomantics? Let's see if it goes get it. We'll give it a few seconds. We just created it. It might not work right away, but there we go. So the expense policy for Globomantics is as follows. I get all the information and then I also see where it took it from. So if I look at it here, you see it shows me the link of the file inside Excalibur where it found that knowledge. But for now, the only thing we did is give knowledge and instructions to our agent. It's already pretty amazing, but can we make it better?